Welcome to Twisted News, where we keep you informed on some of the craziest and strangest stories happening all around the world. For today's episode, we're taking you back to 1995 to look into a murder about a headless man who may have recently finally gotten the justice that he deserves. We'll also look into a brutal crime of a family that was massacred during one of the most celebrated events of the entire year. Remember guys, follow me on social media if you want even more content that you're not going to find here on YouTube and click those notifications so we don't get lost in the algorithm and you know when we drop our new videos. Thanks for tuning in. Hope you enjoy the episode. Now get ready for Scary Mysteries Twisted News. Number one, Headless Man Gets Justice. Till death do us part. That line is probably one of the most recognizable ones out there when it comes to marriage vows. And when it's said, everybody, most especially the couple, expects that they'll live happily ever after and that they'll be able to handle anything that comes their way. But still, the fact remains that spousal crimes actually have a high percentage in criminal cases relating to families. Violence within families has always been prevalent and sadly, the young couple in this story was no exception. They had their happy ending cut short due to a brutal murder of one of them until their odd reunion almost 27 years later. On December 16, 1995, 28-year-old Christoph Dory had an argument with his wife. Allegedly after that, while he was bathing, his wife dropped a plugged-in hair dryer in his bath. Understandably angered at what happened, Christoph decided to leave their home that same day to stay with his brother. And during his brief stay there, he shared with his brother that he had planned to go hunting the following day. However, Christoph left his brother's home just before midnight at about 11.30 in the evening and was never seen again. There was no news of him until his vehicle was found abandoned. And then, on Christmas Day, six days after he was last seen, Christoph's lifeless body was found by hunters in a ditch somewhere in Bousset in central France. He had been beheaded and was only recognized because of his clothes and the papers he had on him. The authorities, however, couldn't locate his head. During that time, police had no leads as to what actually happened or who murdered him. The case was then closed due to no developments. In 2000 and in 2002, the case was reopened due to new possible suspects, but nothing ever came of those, and so both those cases were closed as well. Last April of 2022, to further find clues about this case by doing new tests, Christoph's body was then exhumed. These new discoveries finally led the authorities to possible suspects, one of which was Christoph's own wife. The now 56-year-old widower of Christoph, who remains unnamed, had been arrested and detained last June 26 by authorities. On June 28, she received the murder charges and remains in custody. However, no other details have been released to the public by investigators except for a couple of new and promising discoveries based on the results that came out of the tests they did on the corpse of Christoph. These discoveries apparently show real evidence that proves the widower's involvement in the crime and that she could not have done it alone. Initially, because of her fragility, she was never considered a suspect. But now, the tables have turned. According to investigators, they are keeping mum on the details to avoid compromising the case. During her custody, authorities said that the widower failed to provide credible information and responses to their questions. And the statements she provided were also incoherent, and so, if the widower is found guilty, she may receive up to 30 years in jail. For now, the only thing we can do is wait for the case to unravel and to further understand the details of what exactly happened. Also, to answer why he left his brother's house that evening and what happened shortly after. If this case did rude in a marital argument, 
just makes it more intriguing and disturbing, and also proves just how dark and scary spousal crimes can be. Number two, New Year's Family Massacre. New Year's Eve is an occasion that's usually celebrated with the people you care most about. Family and friends gather together, saying farewell to the outgoing year and greeting the upcoming year with a loud bang. One family in Long Branch, New Jersey was about to do just that. However, instead of loud, booming sounds from fireworks and cheers, a different series of deafening sounds filled their home. And instead of a hopeful, happy new year to welcome in, their relatives ended up welcoming a series of heartbreaking deaths of loved ones. The Kologi family consisted of 42-year-old Stephen and 44-year-old Linda, as well as their three children. And they were all getting ready to welcome in the new year of 2017 at their house. The children's grandfather and his partner, Mary Schulls, along with a friend, were also at the home, celebrating along with them. However, before the ball dropped to mark the end of 2016 and the start of the new year, one of the children called Linda's attention. 16-year-old Scott asked his mother to come up to his room. And there, he was wearing a long black leather jacket, a pair of sunglasses, as well as earplugs. Linda entered the dark room, and then there was a loud sound that caught the attention of Stephen, who rushed up to the room to see if his wife and son were okay. But another loud sound greeted him, and he, same with his wife, fell to the floor dead. The rest of the family were downstairs, probably curious and scared about the sounds. Before they could do anything, Scott came downstairs, bringing with him a high-powered rifle, and there he fatally shot his 18-year-old sister, Brittany. He then went to the kitchen to shoot 70-year-old Mary. Scott did not, however, shoot his grandfather, who was also in the kitchen with his girlfriend. It was said that Scott was actually close to his grandfather, which might have saved the old man's life. When police arrived, they immediately took Scott into custody. They also found the grandfather, older brother, and friend who were able to escape. They were unharmed, but of course, deeply traumatized. And upon the investigation, they discovered that the rifle belonged to Scott's older brother. The teenager shot the weapon 14 times in total, 12 of which hit victims. They also found another semi-automatic rifle in the house. Apparently, Scott told them that he wore the earplugs to protect himself from the loud sounds that the weapons made. Because of his age, Scott was first charged as a juvenile, however the case was transferred to adult court to try to charge and convict him as an adult. His defense team used mental illness as his reason for committing the crimes. They stated that he was on the autistic spectrum, but never got treated despite seeking help from his mother. Allegedly, Scott told his mom that he had thoughts about killing people but Linda refused to bring him to a psychiatrist out of fear that they might keep him in an institution. However, prosecutors said that what Scott did was done in cold blood. Investigators also discovered that Scott even did some research about how effective the weapons he used would be against bulletproof vests worn by cops. He allegedly even learned how to use the gun by watching videos on YouTube. They also believe that Scott planned his steps very well, especially when he lured his mother, followed by his father, away from everyone else. During the interview, after he was arrested, he also calmly answered the questions of the police interrogators. When asked if he knew what he was doing, he said yes. He also denied hearing voices or seeing things, but confided that he did have thoughts about killing others. Authorities still haven't released the motive for these murders. In February of 2022, Scott, who is now 20 years old, was charged with four counts of first-degree murder and one count of second-degree weapons offense. Finally, on June 28, 2022, five years after the mass murders, Scott was found guilty on all charges. He received a sentence of a total of 150 years in prison, 
and will only be eligible for parole after serving 127 of them. Whether or not Scott was suffering from mental illness is up for debate. Now though, the survivors and their relatives will have to live with the trauma of the crimes that they witnessed during one of the most celebrated occasions everywhere and be reminded of the tragedy that one family experienced because of their troubled loved one. Subscribe please if you like this video and so you don't miss out on all our new content. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one.